This video will explain fundamental concepts of experimental analysis for NVH and how to efficiently connect tests and simulation. When we talk about experimental analysis, there are some main steps that help to build the bridge between tests and simulation, which are perform tests to obtain experimental data and experimental displacements and accelerations at the center of tire wheel assembly at the outputs. Then, treat test data, which means that the signal has spurious information such as trends, spikes, and sometimes it should be also resampled before the signal can be considered as useful and reliable. Then, transform test data from time to frequency domain, and usually this step is done with fast Fourier transform algorithm. The first topic that we are going to discuss is about fundamentals of road noise and engine noise tests. Road noise results from the contact of the rotating wheels and the road, while engine noise results from engine loads. So, obviously, moving on a rough road generates different types of noises. The first one is structure bore noise caused by vibrations in the tire contact which are transmitted through the front and rear suspensions to the body in the cockpit. They are predominant below approximately 400 Hz. The second is airborne noise caused by pressure variations in the air nearby, whose pressure pulses propagate through the car panels to driver and passenger's ears, and they are predominant above approximately 400 Hz. The interior road noise is the sum of these two contributions. The same methods explained above can be used to separate the contributions of front and rear axles and the decomposition of contributions is done through a transfer function between the acoustic pressure at a certain observation point and the applied force. Let's briefly mention general input in Compose now. There are some main categories of files that are commonly used in NVH experimental analysis, and each one has a more appropriate function to import data. Compose is able to read inputs of multiple formats, like Excel-compatible files such as CSV or XLSX, MAT files which have a container-like format and store variables of all data types supported by Compose, test and CA files because we leverage hypergraph readers to support files from various acquisition systems and different solvers, and finally other formats like binary, delimited files, text files, and images. The next topic to be discussed is experimental data preparation. Data acquisition in real conditions may face obstacles that create disturbances such as trends or spurious spikes. This noise should be removed to reflect the true behavior of the system. The first technique is about detrend. Detrending a signal removes a trend from a time series, that is, a certain pattern which is not inherent in the data. In this image, we see the mean line, which could be subtracted from the signal as one of the detrending methods available in Compose. Regarding spike detection and removal, it's also important to detect and remove extreme changes in measured data that probably do not represent the actual behavior of the system. We can use an identifier that, for each sample, computes the median of a window composed of the sample and its six surrounding samples, for example. Another data preparation method has to do with resampling which is a technique to change the sampling rate of the signal, which is defined as 1 over the amount of time between successive samples, increasing it or decreasing it. The first example is about how to import a displacement signal and treat its disturbances. We can see that the signal is stored in a comma-delimited file whose first column contains time and the second one contains displacements. Therefore, the quickest way to import it is using this function to read the limited files. As a reminder, Compose supports multiple test formats and also binary files generated by acquisition systems. Then, separate time steps and displacements in two different variables. 
Now let's start to treat the data. The first step is to detrend it. In this case, let's use the constant method to remove the mean of the signal. Then the spikes will be removed using a user-defined median absolute deviation algorithm with the identifier that was explained before. Now the third step is to downsample the signal, which means that the size of the data set will be reduced. The second argument tells us that every sixth sample is retained. After downsampling the signal, it's time to plot three curves. The first one is the original data using red color. The second one is the corrected data without trends or spikes using green color. And the third curve is the downsample data in black dashed line, adding axis labels and legend to the plotting area. When we run the script, we can clearly see that a trend was identified and the mean of the signal was subtracted from every point. We can also verify that some spiral spikes were identified and removed. Finally, the dashed line represents the corrected signal after being downsampled. And if we check the downsampled variable and the corrected signal variable on the variable browser in Compose, we verify that, in fact, every sixth sample was retained. Let's explore now the transformation from time to frequency domain. Fast Fourier transform is one of the most useful and popular algorithms to transform the time domain signal into discrete frequencies based on the length of the data set. Signals contain relevant information and certain kinds of noise that are difficult or even impossible to detect when the analysis is performed only in time domain. Other characteristics and anomalies of the signal are visible in frequency domain, which breaks the signal into its corresponding sine waves. That's why frequency domain data sets are more important for NVH engineers than time domain. As we can see in this image, the time domain signal on the left is comprised of three different sine waves. The last image shows the outcome of FFT function, which is the frequency representation of the time domain signal. Now we'll discuss about filtering. When the signal is transformed from time to frequency domain, Compose also has functions to design and analyze filters, both digital and analog aiming to attenuate the signal according to a certain frequency criterion, if applicable. Digital and analog filters both remove unwanted noise or signal components, but in different ways. Analog filters attenuate signal above or below a chosen cutoff frequency and between a certain range. On the other hand, digital filters can be more precisely programmed, but the signal must be digital. With respect to digital, there are two classes, Infinite Impulse Response, IIR, and Finite Impulse Response, FIR. The term Impulse Response refers to the characteristics of the filter in time domain. Starting with IIR, the main Compose functions for this class are Butterworth, Chebyshev, and Elliptic Filter. Then we have FIR filters whose main functions are window-based filter and multiband filter. Finally, we have analog filtering, and Compose also has functions for this type, such as Bessel, Butterworth, Chebyshev, and Elliptic filter. Let's see an example how to use fast Fourier transform to convert a signal from time to frequency domain and apply a low-pass filter. Based on the corrected signal from the previous example, the first step is to define the sampling frequency. Then, let's perform fast Fourier transform to address the goal of the example. FFT function produces the frequency domain representation of the input signal. The FFT result is usually returned as double-sided, ranging from minus maximum frequency to maximum frequency. Most real-world applications use only the positive half of the frequency spectrum, single-sided, because it's symmetrical, and that's why we can discard half the signal. 
The next operation is the creation of the frequency vector based on the length of the signal and the sampling frequency. The last step is to apply a filter on the signal to attenuate its amplitude after the cutoff frequency of 80 Hz. Let's use a filter order of 5 and apply Butterworth filter function, passing as arguments the filter order and a scalar value specifying the 3 dB cutoff frequency of our low pass filter. It is represented by a ratio of the cutoff value to half the length of the signal. The outputs of butter function are the numerator and the denominator of the filter, namely the transfer function. Now we can use these outputs to filter the signal with this function, passing the numerator, the denominator and the original displacements as inputs. Now it's time to plot the outputs. The first plot in area contains the spectrum, frequency versus amplitude. With the filter displacements in hands, we can visualize in the second plot in area the original and filtered signal, adding a legend to identify each curve. When we run the script, the first plot has the frequency domain outcome from FFT function, with the amplitude indicating the most prevalent frequencies. As we apply the filter considering 80 Hz as the cutoff frequency, from this point onward, the spectrum will be attenuated and therefore the signal will be filtered. The outcome of this filtering process can be seen in the second plot, where we can see the original signal and the filtered one together. Let's see another example to explore how to design a low-pass filter for a multi-channel signal. We have an ASCII file from an acquisition system that has five channels. The first one with time and the second one onward containing displacement. Based on the previous example, now we need not only to apply the filter but also to design it and to apply it in multiple channels. After reading the data and reshaping it to have rows with time steps and columns with different channels, let's save time in a different variable. Specify a sampling frequency, let's say 500 Hz, to design and apply a low pass filter on all channels. We can use a for loop from the second channel to the last one to query the displacement data and filter it. The first step for it is to design the low pass filter. Compute the scalar value specifying the 3 dB cutoff frequency and use it as a maximum attenuation in but or function to design the filter. The other inputs for this function are the cutoff frequency, the stop band frequency, and the minimum attenuation. With the lowest filter order that will meet the requirements, we can use Butterworth filter again to get the numerator and the denominator of the filter. Half the sampling frequency in these functions that we see have to do with the Nyquist frequency, the minimum value to accurately represent the signal. Let's create multiple subplots according to the number of channels and apply the filter on each one of these datasets. Then, we can plot the original signal and the filtered one in red and blue, respectively, adding a legend to identify each curve. When we run the script, we see the information of each channel and the outcome of the filtering process. These datasets could be saved and used by the NVH engineer elsewhere, as they represent the system more accurately now. Please visit Alta Forum, a place where users can interact, ask questions, exchange information, and post about model-based development.